So I'm sitting underneath a new addition here at the Fine Home Building House. This is a deck style single story addition. Uh, it's built with an iJoist floor system. The one side of it is hung on a ledger and it's resting on a glue lamb that is transferring down with pressure treated posts to several large footings. This structure, what you see behind me, is a result of a value engineering change that we had to make kind of midstream. This structure originally was supposed to be a, a three-sided concrete room essentially with a slab. As we started to get into the design process and pricing it with our concrete sub, we realized a couple of things. One was that in order to properly protect the existing foundation of the basement, our new frost walls would have to extend four feet below the footing of the new house, making the proposed walls over 11 feet tall. As soon as we realized like how much work was involved in this section and the cost to us, concrete alone was coming in around 25,000 just for that foundation work. We had to shift gears. The addition itself is oriented around one point uh, on the existing structure. So when we bought the house, there was a two-sided chimney on the back of the house in the dining room area. It had a hearth on the interior and it had a hearth on the exterior. We knew that part of the existing house was gonna become our kitchen and had imagined an addition coming off of that through that location where the chimney was, anticipating that there would be a header there. We would have to do minimal structural work so we could walk from the kitchen to this living room and then from the living room out into the backyard. Because that chimney was the focal point of this construction, that's where we started as far as the actual process. The chimney was tied into the veneer brick walls. So the first step was to bring the chimney down as far as we could to the roof line, and then we needed to disconnect it from the rest of the house. It was so large that we couldn't get rid of that chimney by hand. We wanted the excavator to, to pull it out, uh, but I didn't want to take the whole wall with it. So we very carefully saw cut down the side of the chimney. We made sure that we were totally disconnected on the sides and on the top. You know, the only connection point being the bottom. So that when, way when the excavator put his strap around the chimney and he yanked on it, it would break at the lowest point and just fall backwards out of the house. Our plan for once in my life went without a hitch. In about two minutes, the chimney was out of the house and we suddenly had the big hole you know, to, to walk from the future addition into the kitchen. So from there, our excavator took over basically and, and dug out a, a massive hole where we planned this new retaining wall. The foundation itself for the addition, we had the excavator dig three very large footings. They're 36 inches in diameter and they're about five feet deep. We used a really large sonotube for a couple of reasons. One is the ease of locating the posts. You know, they are pretty much perfectly centered, but if something was amiss with his layout, we would have 36 inches of play to drop that post onto the footing. And then the other reason we opted for a really large sonotube instead of a traditional footing and sonotube pier, so like you might see a 24 by 24 footing at the bottom of the hole and a 12 inch sonotube or 18 inch sonotube coming up, was that by the time he dug the holes with his bucket, the holes were already large enough for a, a big sonotube. And at that point, it was just more efficient for him to set a big sonotube and pour in one section rather than two pours or build something, you know, uh, like a more traditional footing. The retaining wall uh, is made from Versalock blocks. It's taking the place of that cast in place cement wall, but it's closed on two sides with its third side being open, as opposed to the original design, which was a three-sided concrete room with a door cut into it and steps. Our goals were to eliminate the concrete as much as possible, to eliminate the staircase, for the reason of expense, but also for ease of use. You know, it's hard to get something heavy down a flight of stairs when you could just walk it down a slope. The install for the addition starts with the footings and with the ledger. So once the footings were in, they were cured. We started with layout. The first portion of that being the ledger, that dictates the beginning and the end of either outside wall of the addition. And then from there, we pulled square off of the house and use that imaginary rectangle to locate our posts. And from there, we plumb down 
we located our post brackets, we installed those, and then we started installing the posts first. The posts support a pressure-treated glue glam. This was another tricky aspect of this build was finding a way to use an engineered structural beam that was rated for outdoor use. As you can see, the glue lamb is exposed. It's not going to become part of the thermal layer um, and it encapsulated in the house. It'll be something that's out all the time in the weather. So it was a little bit of a challenge finding something that was rated for all weather, even though it's covered. Uh, so we opted for a pressure treated glue lamb. The six by six posts carry that and then the eye joist rests on top of that. In order of operations, we worked with the ledger first, then pulling square for the new structure, setting post spaces, setting six by sixes, shooting our eye joist elevations, setting the glue lamb on top, and then starting with the out to outside eye joist, we created that, turned that imaginary rectangle into a real one, uh, squared it to the building, and then infilled the rest of the eye joist from there. I think at the end of the day, I'm actually happier with the solution, both from an aesthetic standpoint, there's something about the elevation change from the grade, the new first floor addition and the new second floor that looks really interesting. It also is pretty easy to get into. We've utilized this space heavily. As you can see behind me, we have a bunch of siding getting stained right now. We're lucky to have subs that are interested in a collaborative relationship and helping us figure out a solution to our problem. As builders, we work in a cost plus style. So it's a time and materials based contract with a fixed profit and overhead fee. In the beginning of this project, I extended that idea and that opportunity to our subs here also, knowing that A, that this is a personal project for us and it's a little bit uh, atypical. It's not them coming in to work for a client of ours. But I also wanna make sure they are feeling taken care of and we're not feeling taken advantage of either. So much in construction, we deal with the I win, you lose, you win, I lose game. So when it came time to figure this out with our excavator, he was really motivated to help us figure this out because he was working cost plus and has gone on since to do this with other clients. So I think Encouraging transparency and creativeness among our subtrades is like a big part of what I do as a builder and a big part of what we've encouraged here at the house to try and figure out these issues that inherently come up like this foundation for this addition is just part of what this process has been like.